Hello and welcome back to Bangladesh from Norgan in the north of the country, the breadbasket of Bangladesh. In this video, I'm going to be exploring this district and also heading to some other parts in the north of the country. And I'm staying here with Mittel's family. I came here six years ago and I'm looking forward to showing a bit of the green side of Bangladesh in the next video or two. We have a car booked for us to take us around for the next couple of days. So we'll head down there and get started with the journey. So after about an hour's drive outside of Nogan, we are here at the Kusumba Mosque. Built between 1558 and 1559 under a period of Afghani rule here in the region. It is nicknamed the Black Gem of Bangladesh, made from granite stone marble this is a five taka note in bangladesh and this is the mosque we are seeing here so this is the mosque on the five taka note and just above the entrance there in arabic is the inscription of the date when the mosque was built and it says built by in persian as well It's still active today, despite being well over 400 years old. Very few tourists here, amazing to touch the history here. Built in a Bengal style, the black granite is quite special. very old tamarind tree here which is probably at least a couple hundred years old look at the width of the trunk one thing i love about this area is the sound of the birds and the nature the rice paddies and fields all around and if we walk away from the mosque here there is a small reservoir or lake steps leading down to it We are just coming here for a char stop on the road. On the bad. <laughs> Norgan is this way, and we are heading to our next place, which is on the other side of Norgan. Salam alaikum. You can see the thick milk. Nowhere better than on the side of the street made in an authentic way. Even we ask for less sugar and it's still very sweet.
after making our way for quite some time in the car, we are at our next spot for today, Jagadala Mahivara, which was a Buddhist monastery built between the mid 11th century and the 12th century. It's a little bit similar to Pahapur, which I visited last time in Bangladesh six years ago. And that is a place I highly recommend that you visit if you're anywhere near the northern part of the country. This is Pahapur on a far smaller scale. This one is lying in the middle of a rural village. No entry fee, no security guard. Just the combination of nature and history. And that brings me to telling you about my journey getting here in the car. It is so incredibly picturesque. Just looking at all the rice fields as we made our way through the very pretty tree-lined roads going through villages and seeing the green and the reflection of the sun on the water and here now we couldn't be further away from Dakar if we tried right near the border with India Mittal what's the name of this prominent red tree here so this is called shimul tree is basically blooms in spring and we can harvest cotton from this flower hello someone likes the taste of old buddhist monuments huh while i'm here i thought i should also mention that from rajshahi we took a bus for an hour and a half or so to reach Norgan and the two cities are pretty well connected. There's loads of buses going all the time. I'm liking this view right here of the tree in the background and the ruins in front. Shopping for lunch in this town here. Bit of construction going on, as seems to be with the whole of Bangladesh at times during this period of building boom. Do we cross the road? Yeah, we need to check on the bottom. I don't know which one it is. found a place for lunch here we have dal mutton fish and chicken curry one thing here is the whole garlic something I've never done before Yeah, I like it. That's the way to eat. Mittal told me to suck it first, not to just throw it all in my mouth. <laughs> and now you can put the whole in your mouth. Mm. It's not as strong as I thought it would be. In fact, it's kind of melt in the mouth and fairly subtle, the flavor. It's really nice.
following lunch we have made our way to a village here where there is kind of a well-known local sweet shop just heading there now for something post meal not sure if you can quite see there but that's actually a mud house not so many of them left nowadays but go back many decades and numerous houses here were made of mud <laughs> this excursion is giving us a glimpse of village life here in northern Bangladesh can see the cow dung on the walls of the mud house there. Hello. This is a fascinating glimpse into the village life. Looks like we found it. He's telling us to shoot the sweet chicken. This is called sponge rasagulla, which is very famous, especially this one in the whole Naga. That is called Mataji Hat. And it says sponge of sugar, it's like a sweet that is soaked in sugar juice. Mittal reminded me that the last time I commented on this sweet, I called it a uh, ball of diabetes six years ago. Sweet ball of diabetes. I think it still is. Um, it's really sweet. <laughs> but good after a hot meal, when your mouth feels spicy. Kind of refreshing, but it definitely is uh, pretty sweet. Somehow I thought it would be a little bit calmer than it is, but it's kind of crazy here. There's the animal market over there, tons of people. We're gonna carry on this way. Hello. More houses made with mud here and on the other side as well. So we've ended up taking a mode of transportation to get back to our car after walking a long way through the village. And just to make it clear, the mud houses are a mix of houses for people and also some for cattle. The ones with smoother walls are for humans and the ones for cattle are the ones you see like cracks in the walls and cow dung being used. And majority of people don't live in mud houses, I don't want to give you that idea um, but there are some still if you go deeper into the village you'll find them today as it's part of the history look at this view right in front of me here
following, making our way through the village there. I thought on the way back before wrapping things up for today, I would show you a little bit of the beautiful scenery that you see all over the north of Bangladesh, the peaceful, quiet rice paddies, the trees, the scenery, and the locals working the land. 80% of the land here is under cultivation. Most of the local population are farmers. Many of the roads look like this with trees lining either side. So I'm going to leave things here for today. I will catch you tomorrow where we'll be continuing this video, visiting some more interesting places in this area. Hello and welcome back. Today we have made our way to the ancient city of Mahasthanagar, which is a little bit north of a nearby city called Bogura, formerly known as Bogra. And this is one of the earliest archaeological sites in Bangladesh, dating to around the 3rd century BC, this walled city. To enter as a foreigner, it is 300 takar, 20 takar if you are a local. Walking along the wall, and it's believed that the site was chosen for the fact that it's about 36 meters above sea level. Dakar, for contrast, is around six meters above sea level. Most of the interior of the city today is grassland, although there will be some ruins scattered here and there. The wall which you can walk on is one of the few remaining pieces of history. Coming off the wall there and walking through what was the center of the old city, it was capital of the Pundra kingdom, which existed during the Iron Age, and it's even mentioned in the Mahabharata. It was actually a British guy called Alexander Cunningham who first identified the site as the capital of the Pundra kingdom in the 1870s. Just beside the ruins here is the Karatoya River, which was said to have been at least three times the size of the Ganges as recently as the 13th century, although that might not be 100% accurate, but it was certainly once a huge flowing river which gave the city its source of water. And you can see how the site kind of merges with the villages. Some banyan trees here. And rice paddies, cattle and peat locals living nearby. moved on to a place called Gokul Med, which is quite impressive to the eye. It has a history to do with Hinduism. A story here being that there was a bridal chamber for Behula and Lokinda. And I won't go into the details of the story, it's quite long and there's snakes and death involved, but it is a significant place for Hindus in history. There was also a Buddhist stupa here at one time as well, and the structure was built in around the 6th or 7th century. So it is the following day here in Norgan and I'm going to end my video here. I hope it gave you a good taste of some of the sites and rice fields in the northern part of Bangladesh. 
stay tuned for the next video. I'm going to be showing a little bit of family life, staying with Mittel's uh, parents and also showing you footage from when I stayed with his auntie and uncle in Rajshahi and also a few rickshaw rides roaming around the city and soaking in a little bit of local life here, food. And I think I'm gonna do the henna on my hair like I did six years ago. I'll show you that as well. So stay tuned for the next one. Peace.